Yeah, good evening. Uh, so just five days ago, I was in a little mountain village in Colombia called Minca, a super beautiful place. And uh, my traveling companion, who happened to be Alain, and I, we were looking for a little place uh, to have lunch. And so Alain, uh, at the doorway of a charming cafe, asked the hostess cook, do you serve soy cappuccinos? And the woman asked, uh, what's that? And Alain said, well, it's an espresso coffee with steamed soy milk. And she thought about it and she said, well, I don't know what that is, but indeed I can make you one. Wow. And we thought that was really funny. Uh, but in my mind, I was like, okay, there is a quintessential entrepreneur, right? She saw an opportunity, she saw a market need, and uh, she had the confidence to try, to learn, and to risk failure right in front of her potential new clients. And um, I'd have to say that, by contrast, I I've never been anything like that. I've let things like imposter syndrome, perfectionism, and just general fear of failure hold me back from a lot of opportunities that I could have grabbed. Uh, nonetheless, it's been almost two decades that I've been an independent worker as a dance teacher, as an English teacher online, and I've had a lot of other hustles. And by my own standards, I would say that I've been very successful. So basically today, I just want to share with you um, a vision for an entrepreneur or a style of entrepreneur that isn't the typical, that might not be the vision that we think of when we think of an entrepreneur. Growing up, I never really knew what I wanted to do, never knew what I wanted to be. In fact, in my uh, graduating year, in the yearbook, they prompted you with, what's your ambition? And I said, my ambition is to have an ambition. <laughs> and, um, you know, I think people that look at me and look at my lifestyle uh, would, would not characterize me as being ambitious. And ambition being one of those traits of an entrepreneur. But in fact, I think I would argue that today. I think that I have, in my own way, been very ambitious in the sense that um, I, I've worked hard and I've sacrificed not having certain things in my life for other things. So I don't own my own house, I don't have a car, I don't, have, I don't spend money on nice clothes. But I forego that for things that have been of such importance to me, mostly a sense of freedom, uh, time flexibility, and ultimately really enjoying what I do day to day. So, um, yeah, basically I have worked the nine to five in the past. I've had a few jobs, two in particular that I really love. One of them, I worked for four years as a advertising copywriter for radio, and that was of interest to me. And then I worked for four years at a not-for-profit organization that I super believed in the mission, and I loved that organization. But despite the fact that both these places were really in line with my values, and I loved them, um, waking up every day to an alarm clock, for me, like the quintessential night owl, was so difficult and having to follow the rhythm of this set schedule, working when I don't necessarily have energy and then being off when I have loads of energy, it just, it, it, it wore me down. It was a grind that uh, didn't, didn't really suit me. So, but while I was working at this non-for-profit organization, my real passion, teaching dance, I did it as a side gig and I really loved it. I built up a, a, a clientele and then, as the saying goes, when uh, preparation meets opportunity, there you have his luck. And I had the good luck of meeting another dance teacher with complementary skills uh, with his own clientele, also known as Alain. And <laughs> my forces, I left my nine to five and our dance studio hit the ground running. And that was 18 years ago. So. I wish I had time to tell you of the many, many blessings that have, having been a dance teacher, having my own studio for so long that brought. I don't have time. But um, it didn't come without sacrifice, uh, other kind of sacrifice. For example, just over the holidays, I was speaking to a good friend of mine, 
and he told me that he is retiring this March. And I was so happy for him, but admittedly was also super envious, because he's the same age as me. I was like, well, I don't know, I want to retire. But the truth is, I'm not going to retire this year. I'm probably not going to retire in 10 years. I probably will never be able to retire. Or we, we don't know, right? Um, but then I thought, OK, but I wouldn't ever change places with him. While he was battling his workday, uh, supposed, his own words, toxic environment, staving off nervous breakdowns. I was enjoying laughter with my students and seeing the joy when they capture these concepts. And on a Sunday afternoon when it was sunny out, I said, um, let me take the afternoon off and spend the time in the park, you know? And of course, there's a cost for that. So although uh, I'm reluctant to call myself an entrepreneur, I am not the poster child of an entrepreneur. I'm sure a lot of you um, are probably more go-getter and have a lot of skills that I don't have. I also wanted to share with you, uh, if you're more like me, that uh, yeah, entrepreneurs have many different faces and this is one of them. And um, so I'm so happy to be part of this uh, group because I think there's some cross-pollination. We can really help each other. And I want you guys to help me have that confidence of a Colombian woman who is like, cappuccino, what's that? And says, I can do it. <laughs> so thank you for your time.